Hello and welcome back to the Granberry Volunteer Fire Department and our Fire Academy. I am Matt Hohan, Captain of Operations, and today we're going to cover Section 21, Portable Fire Extinguishers. Portable Fire Extinguishers is a very usable option and should be considered on almost all small fires. Now, obviously, a fire extinguisher is going to be situational specific, but I couldn't tell you how many structure fires that we've responded to that we've actually used a fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire. And that, that way we didn't have to actually deploy the hose off the truck, stretch it, ultimately get the pump and pump gear, fill the hose with water, and spray water inside. Portable fire extinguishers are a great way to minimize damage inside a structure. Also with portable extinguishers, they're very good for very specific types of fires. And we're going to go into a couple of different types of fires throughout this slideshow. As usual, you can always follow along on sffma.org, go to certifications, and look for Firefighter 1 and 2. Other than that, we're about to start. Hope you enjoy. Identify five classes and give five examples of a Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class K fire. Now, if you look at your slide, you'll look at the right side of the slide. A Class A fire is any type of solid, wood, paper, cloth, and it's just common combustibles. Now, a Class B fire is flammable liquids and gases. So gasoline, jet fuel, propane, natural gas. A Class C fire is live electrical equipment. So computers, refrigerators, just anything that you can plug into a wall outlet. And that wall outlet can be 120, it can be 240, 250, and even your large high voltage lines. That can be live electrical equipment. A Class D fire, combustible metals, and we're going to go into great detail on Class D fires here in a little bit. Uh, they're very unique fires. They're, they're, they're truly a pain in the butt to deal with when you get them. Um, a lot of fire behavior when you're dealing with a Class D fire kind of goes out the window, and there's a lot of hazards and dangers associated with a Class D fire. And then lastly, cooking media cooking oils that you're going to find either in the kitchen or in restaurants. So Crisco, olive oil, canola oil, on and on and on. You're going to have a lot of cooking media. Appropriate extinguishers for each class of fire as follows. So if you have a class A fire, wood, paper, plastic, common combustible, the best extinguisher to use is a stored water pressure extinguisher. A stored water pressure extinguisher is going to have approximately two and a half gallons of water in it, and it's pressurized up to 100 psi. And you're actually going to have quite a bit of reach with this extinguisher, about 25 feet. Now, a cool trick to do with the Class A extinguisher, water extinguisher, is you can add either a commercial foam product to it or even just a little dish Dawn soap. And that soap's going to add a foam factor to the water, and the water's going to be able to also help cool and smother your fire. Now, Class B fire, you're going to want to use a dry chemical or CO2 extinguisher for these types of events. Class B fires are a liquid fire or a gas fire, and a dry, a dry chemical extinguisher is going to work really well for just spraying on the surface and coating, and the CO2 extinguisher is going to work by helping to remove the oxygen from the immediate area and help cool the immediate area. On a Class C fire, dry chemical and CO2 are your best options again. A dry chemical because it's going to help smother the fire and CO2 because it's going to take the heat and remove the oxygen out of the area. A Class D fire 
powder extinguishing agents for metal fires. Class D fires get very tricky really quick. Certain metals, when they're burning, require very specific extinguishing agents. Titanium is one of those agents. Uh, if you use dry chemical on a titanium fire, it's really not going to work. It may help smother the fire a little bit, but when you get into very specific metals, you need a very specific extinguisher. In the event that you have a Class D fire, the first extinguisher that you want to try and use is a dry chemical extinguisher. If the dry chemical extinguisher is not working, you might have to consider firefighting techniques to extinguish that fire, like just isolating the, the material that's burning or just trying to smother it with another substance. Class K fires, cooking media fires, grease fires, you're looking for a very specific type of agent to extinguish a grease fire. Your best method is going to be, from an extinguisher point of view, is either the commercial unit that's already installed over the grease fat, like in a restaurant, or a CO2 extinguisher. The reason dry chem isn't worth a hoot on a grease fire is because as the dry chemical agent hits the top of the grease, it's incredibly hot. And the dry chemical agent, instead of covering the top of the grease fat, what it's going to do is it's going to draw into itself. And it's going to create gaps in the top of the, the coating of what you're trying to put on top of the grease. And those gaps are still going to allow enough vapor to vent off and still continue to burn. So Class K fires, you need a very specific type of extinguishing system that's usually installed with the unit or use a CO2 extinguisher. Portable fire extinguisher rating systems. Guys, when you go back to your stations or you're at Home Depot or Walmart and you pick up a fire extinguisher, you're going to notice on the extinguisher there's a bunch of symbols, a bunch of pictures, and then a written out explanation of what that extinguisher does. And we're going to go through all five real quick. The basic symbol for a common combustible extinguisher, a stored water pressure, is going to be a green triangle with an A in it. The picture is going to be that little burning trash can and a pile of wood next to it. A class B extinguisher is going to be dry chemical, and that's going to be a red square with a B inside of it, and then of course a burning trash, a trash correction a gas can with a fire next to it and that's going to be indicating you know for use on flammable liquids and gases a class c extinguisher is going to be a blue circle with the c inside of it and then the plug and outlet burning indicating live electrical equipment that's going to be your co2 extinguishers a class d extinguisher is going to have a yellow star with a d inside of it and the picture is going to be the exact same thing. It's going to be a yellow uh, star with a D inside of it indicating combustible metals. And then finally, cooking media is going to be a black octagon with a K inside of it. And then the picture is going to show a little frying pan with a fire coming out of it indicating a grease fire and cooking media. Now, these extinguishers can be used for different fires. And we're going to start with the Class A extinguisher, the water extinguisher. If you take a piece of electrical equipment that's burning and you unplug it, and the electricity is secured to that object, you can use a Class A extinguisher. The things you need to remember is, is that if that's a sensitive piece of equipment, the water inside the extinguisher is going to wreak havoc across the circuit boards. And then the other factor is, is that piece of equipment that's been unplugged, how many relays does it have inside of it? How many capacitors does it have inside of it that's still storing up electricity? Serious factor to consider when you're using a water extinguisher on an electrical fire. I would not use a water extinguisher for a liquid fire or a gas fire, and I definitely would never use a water extinguisher on a combustible metal fire. Water and a, and a metal fire do not mix. 
the water has a very violent reaction with the metal and it typically causes the metal to explode. The other place where I'd never use water is on a, a grease fire. Again, this is an oil and, and water question. The water hits the oil, it's going to sink to the bottom, but the grease is incredibly hot. So the water starts to sink, but it's going to instantly turn into steam and it's going to rise, but it's going to expand at 1700 to 1. So what's going to happen is, is you're going to cause a gigantic fireball to occur when you're doing a grease fire and you start using water. Now, a Class B extinguisher, that dry chem extinguisher, that's a universal extinguisher. You can use it just about everywhere except for cooking media fires. It's a very common extinguisher. You probably have one at your fire department now, but if you go to Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's to go buy an extinguisher, they're going to have Class B extinguishers. That dry chem agent is fantastic for extinguishing a Class A, Class B, Class C, and usually a Class D fire. Now, a Class C extinguisher, the CO2 extinguisher, it's typically going to be most effective on an electrical fire, but it's also very handy for a small liquid fire and gas fire, and you can use it to extinguish uh, a common combustible fire, a Class A fire. A Class C extinguisher can also be used on a combustible metal fire, not nearly as effective as a dry chem extinguisher, but if you're in a tight spot and that's the only extinguisher you have, you can definitely use it on a cooking uh, a combustible metal fire. And a Class C extinguisher a Class C extinguisher is fantastic for cooking media fires. It's the most recommended extinguisher for a big grease fire, let's say in a restaurant or even at home. A Class C extinguisher is going to be fantastic for that type of fire. A combustible metal extinguisher, again, dry chem's the one to use there. Um, and when you get to the very specific agents, you can't take one agent that's used, let's say, for titanium and use it on magnesium. It won't be as effective. So when you have specific metals with specific extinguishing agents, you have to use that agent for that metal. And they, they, they just, they're not going to work for the A, B, C, or K fires. Now, when you get to a Class K extinguisher, you know, typically your most restaurants, they actually have a big extinguishing system, usually over the grill and usually over the, the giant oil vats that they use for cooking. And that's going to be the best material for physically extinguishing the fire. But if you make scene to a restaurant fire and you still have a little bit of fire coming off the grease vats, then what I highly recommend you do is use that uh, Class C extinguisher to finish extinguishing it. And if that's not available, try and smother it. See if there's a large lid somewhere in the restaurant that you can just cover the vat with that lid. If you have any questions, make sure you write them down. Portable extinguishers for each class of fire as follows. So we're going to talk about how to actually use a portable extinguisher. And then when you come to class, we're actually going to physically use an extinguisher to extinguish a Class A and a Class B fire. The technique used to extinguishing and using, an, using the extinguisher is called PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. And what we're talking about with pull is physically pull the pin that's protecting the handle for, for accidental activation of the extinguisher. Pull the pin and just drop it in your pocket. Aim the extinguisher at the fire. Squeeze the handle down. And then sweep the, the extinguisher nozzle across the fire. Don't aim the extinguisher at the fire. Sweep the extinguisher across the fire. You're trying to get maximum coverage with the extinguisher. The other thing that I want to add to this is, is if you think about taking that extinguisher and you hold it really, really close to what you're trying to extinguish, that is a compressed 
pressurized material inside a container. It's going to come out with velocity and it's going to come out with force. And if you're right on top of it and it just sprays right into, let's say, a burning liquid, well, you're going to shoot the burning liquid all over the place. So you need to keep your distance as you're starting to activate the extinguisher and start coating it by sweeping it and slowly move up. Don't just stand there and launch the extinguishing material straight into the middle of the burning liquid because you're going to create a much larger fire and the fire is going to start spreading. But at least it's, it's been splashed everywhere in the process. Explain the extinguishing effects needed for each class of fire as follows. A Class A fire and a Class A portable water extinguisher. The primary effect of the water is, is it's going to cool the burning object. That's going to be the main benefit from it. But if you add some foam to it, whether it be a commercial product or even a little dish Dawn soap, you're going to create a foam blanket and you're going to get a smothering effect as well. Now on a Class B fire, a dry chem extinguisher that, that dry chem agent is going to smother, it's going to coat the burning material, and what it's going to do is blanket, and it's going to isolate the burning material from the oxygen atmosphere, and that's how that fire is going to be extinguished. Now, a Class C fire with a CO2 extinguisher, the CO2 is going to do a couple of different things here. The first one is, is the CO2 is a big white cloud from the extinguisher approaches and envelops the burning object. It's going to displace oxygen out of the area. That's going to help extinguish the fire. The other benefiting factor of this is, is that the CO2 itself is very cold. So you're going to have a rapid cooling of the object as well. Another benefit of a CO2 extinguisher is, is that it is non-conductive. So it doesn't matter what the amount of electricity flowing into the, to the piece of electrical equipment that's burning, a CO2 extinguisher is not going to become uh, conductive, thus electrocuting you. On a Class D extinguisher, it has to be a non-reactive agent with the burning material. The idea is, is you're going to take the burning material and you're going to coat it, you're going to isolate it and smother it from the oxygen around it. A Class K fire, or cooking media fire, again, very situational specific for the type of extinguisher they're using, and your best extinguisher to use for a grease fire is going to be a CO2 extinguisher. And a CO2 extinguisher is going to physically eliminate the oxygen from the top of the oil, and it's going to snuff out the fire. The other benefit with the commercial extinguishing systems installed is, is that they'll lay down a layer on top of the oil, which will have a vapor suppression effect. It'll just isolate the hot liquid, and it'll trap the vapors below the layer and then smothering it. Explain fire characteristics and operation. Guys, I'm going to go into a lot more detail on a couple of different types of extinguishers and one particular extinguishing system. And it's just going to be overall use and what we're expecting. So when we're talking about a Class A extinguisher, a water extinguisher, typically they're a two and a half gallon can. It's obviously pressurized and they're going to primarily be used on just common combustible materials. Again, don't use them on a grease fire and never use them on a metal fire. Now, the stream reach under normal conditions, it's a pressurized vessel. So when you first press the handle down, all the pressure is at its maximum. You're going to start at your maximum operating reach. As pressure decreases, the reach will decrease until there's no more pressure left in the container. And then you will literally have no more water coming out of the extinguisher. The maximum reach at the start of the extinguishing is going to be 25, 
20 feet in that range. He got really good reach. Typical discharge time under normal conditions, you're going to have about 30 to 40 seconds of actual water stream use out of a small water can. You can cover a lot of surface area and do a lot of good work in those few seconds. There is the caution of freezing with a water extinguisher. It's a sealed container. It is water once temperatures get below freezing. You do know that water expands as it turns into a solid and it can potentially rupture your water can. So you have to protect them from freezing. And we know about the method of operation. It's pass. Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Now CO2 extinguisher. CO2 extinguishers come in various sizes. The CCO2 extinguishers also installed in large facilities, can be industrial, can be manufacturing, can be laboratories. But typically what you're going to see on the fire ground is you're going to see about a 20 pound extinguisher. And it's a large extinguisher. It's, uh, it's pretty bulky. It's kind of heavy. Um, and of course the CO2 extinguisher is primarily applicable to electrical fires and grease fires. But it can be used for liquid fires. It can be used for a Class A fire, common combustibles. And it can be used for metal fires. There's no freezing problems with the CO2 extinguisher. Uh, the reach... The physical reach of the gas cloud coming out of the extinguisher is going to be about 15 to 10 to 15 feet, and it'll discharge very quickly. Usable time on a CO2 extinguisher will be 10 to, or correction, 15 to 20 seconds. And again, we know the method of operation: pass, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Dry chemical extinguishers come in many various shapes and sizes. Um, Typical fire extinguisher that you might have in a car is called a two and a half pound extinguisher. If you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, they have lots of five and ten pound extinguishers. Typically, what we carry on the fire department is 15 or 20 pound extinguishers. And I have seen dry chem extinguishers as large as 250 and 500 pounds in certain settings. Uh, the stream reach under those conditions. Uh, universally is all going to be between 10 to 15 feet. Uh, discharge time is going to be between 25 and 35 seconds. No hazard of freezing. You do have to be cognizant and aware of the fact that if your dry chemical extinguisher sits in the same spot for year after year after year, the powder in the extinguisher can actually become compacted in the bottom, and you actually need to rotate the extinguisher at least every six months. And all that means is take the extinguisher, turn it upside down, let the powder drop to the top of the extinguisher, and then turn it back upright and let the powder drop back to the bottom. That's just to keep it from becoming a big old wad of chalk at the bottom of the extinguisher. And method of operation. We know the method of operation on this. It's pass, pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Now the last extinguishing system I want to talk about is a Halon 1211. Now, Halon, believe it or not, is a very, very, very expensive extinguishing system, and it's only installed in areas that have highly sensitive electrical equipment. Now, the odds of you actually seeing a Halon system is incredibly rare, but the two places where I know that they have a compressed gas extinguishing system is the nuclear power plant down in Glenrose, they have a Halon system, and the Granberry ISD building, the server room, has a compressed gas system. Here's the most important thing that you need to know about a compressed gas system. They forcibly inject a massive amount of inert gas into the room. That gas is non-flammable. The purpose of this gas is to fill the space with this gas and displace oxygen. It will make the oxygen rise to the ceiling. Here's the problem. 
If you walk into that room without the appropriate breathing protection and you breathe that atmosphere, there's no oxygen in it, but at least that gas is going to fill your lungs. You're going to become incapacitated within seconds. That is a major hazard with these compressed gas extinguishing systems. I'm not going to go into how to deal with these systems. I'm just going to make you aware of these systems and realize that if you're in Granbury and you're going to a fire at the Granbury ISD building and it's it's in the server room, you have to have your SCBA on. So this concludes our fire extinguisher presentation. And for tonight's quiz, I don't have any specific questions for you. What I want you to do is commit to memory, and I mean know this inside and out. When someone says a Class A fire, you need to know exactly what to use to extinguish it and exactly what's actually burning. And I want you to know that for all classes of fire. Class A, Class B, Class C... Class D, and Class K fires. I want you to know that inside and out. That is your quiz for the evening. Have a good one.